Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry, it's April 23rd here in New York City. Uh, and what I do every day, or not every eh, what I try to do it as often as I have time for, is do a prom that I haven't done yet. This is an additional to the day prom, so if you're new here, definitely uh, just, you know, if you want another prom to do to self with Larry, then here you go. Uh, it's a prom that I haven't done yet. It's not the same as I haven't seen before because I've seen a lot, so I don't know. But let's take a look. 801, minimum swaps to make sequences increasing. You're given two integer arrays of same length nums1, nums2, and one operation you swap nums1 and survive with nums2 survive. Okay, and then we have to return the minimum number to make them, they're both strictly increasing so that it's always possible. Okay, so I, mean, I think this is, I would say it is, I mean, I wouldn't say this is straightforward, but it is dynamic programming, right? But, and they're, um, yeah, I mean, it's just dynamic programming, right? Basically, the idea is that, the core idea is that at every index, at every index, it's, there are only two possible um, configuration for the last index, right? Which is, it, it swapped or it didn't swap. And once we know that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, uh, I am. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I. I hmm. what, what I'm hesitating is that I want to teach it using the um, using top down, but I do also want to practice bottoms up in general. I think that's something that I've been um, over the years gotten weaker at for whatever reason. So I'm going to practice doing the bottoms up. So it may not be as instructional, but hopefully we'll get around it, right? Um, but yeah, but basically here, uh, and there is a way, and, and you know, looking at that, right? Um, because every index only, there are only two possibilities, and and every index only ma um, depend on the result of the previous index. You, you can actually do a space optimization immediately as well. A lot of top engineer, uh, top um, competitive, um, a lot of top people do this um, like calculation way quickly and way fast. Um, I am, I think when I was younger and when I, and I was at my peak shape, I am able to do this as, as well. Still maybe not as, you know, as fast and as good at, um, as, as some of the top people, but you know, good and fast in my own way. But, but I definitely have not been doing that enough, so I've been very kind of just slow in general as a result, right? So that's kind of that. So having said that, I, I just want, and I'm slowing down just because I could explain it to y'all, but I also want to just be able to kind of like, you know, just do it as as well as I can. So um, if you're not following along too well on this one, my apologies, because I want to, I, I think for today, I want to deliberately practice this without doing the whole teaching process and stepping it up and hopefully getting it correctly as soon as possible. Uh, but for y'all at home, you can just try, what I would say is try to do it top down, right? With dynamic programming, given what maybe this hint, if you will, of the thing that I said to you. And then go through the process of converting that to bottoms up if you can, and then converting the bottoms up to the space optimized version, which is all of one space, which is pretty cool if you ask me, right? Um, in some circles, I don't know that I've seen this term that much anymore, but I, I think it used to be called um, suffix dynamic programming because you only really add something to the suffix. Um, but maybe I'm wrong on that one. Maybe it's been a while and maybe I, or I just mix things up, which also happens a lot. But it, it but these kind of very, I mean, maybe not this one specifically is a weird variation of it, but a lot of these variation is usually or is often um, for like, string e dynamic programming problems which i guess in this one you can kind of call it like a string if you just count a digit as a or a number as like a a, a character of the alphabet if you will right um and that alphabet of course can have you know many sizes but that's fine but <clears throat> okay look so then now here we have uh dp is equal to as we said we only need two indexes yeah okay let's let's do it that way right uh i mean i i should do it this way but it is still scary 
to do it this way, right? Uh, so it's zero, zero, right? And then current is to go to zero, zero as well. And then here, um, just to kind of set it up a little bit, and maybe as a reminder for myself, zero, uh, uh, index zero is same, index one is swapped, right? And if, if I had done it in, in top down, the reason why I don't need to do this is because you can memorize based on a Boolean parameter, and that's what I would do. Um, give me two seconds. I'm going to grab a, oh geez, a quick quarter. I'm talking a lot for this problem, so. <laughs> Uh, okay, right? Um, N is at least two, so that is good. And I don't know if that current is right, but um, I just like to set it up so that I have a reminder. Right, so then now for index and range of N, right? Current, um, well, do we, we, we don't, I'm trying to think. Um, the 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 base case is actually wrong, because um, if you swap on the first one, the best case is going to be one, right? So that's actually wrong. And now we can start on the first index because now we don't need the previous. I mean, because the zero of index is the base case, right? So then now here we go. Um. And maybe we start at infinity, right? And then basically, okay, so we have to go through the two cases, right? So um, so let's just say same, which is to say it didn't get swapped. So, and now we have to go through the cases. It's a little bit trickier to write bottoms up than top down in this regards because, I don't know. I just find it a, a little bit trickier. Some, or I think it's, well, yeah, I mean, I think it's just the same thing as I've said, right? Because I've not practiced enough. So maybe it should be a little bit better, right? So here, I just say, I mean, I know that I always said it, but then it happens at every iteration. I don't think that's focused. Um, so yeah. Okay, so then now the same, right? So if, uh, okay, so then now the same is going to be, Uh, let's just say p1 for previous one and p2 is equal to nums1 sub index minus one and nums2 of index minus one, right? Then now, uh, and maybe c1, c2 is equal to nums1 sub index. And I, I just want to, this is just so that it's a little bit easier to write um, because I'm going to write this a lot, <laughs> I suspect, right? So then now, if we're in the same case, then if C1 is greater than P1 and C2 is greater than P2 because we haven't swapped, then that's fine, right? So then now the new keeping it the same, uh, uh, yeah, is going to be the min of this and then the previous of keeping it the same, plus, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be plus one, right? Um, and is that it? Well, that, that is it from the same coming from the same, right? So, yeah. So this is a little bit misleading, I think. It's just um, the current, um, no swap uh, no swap on the current index, right? Because I think there are four possibilities and I'm kind of mixing them up and being not precise, right? Previous, uh, looking up the, no quotes. Looking up the previous same, right? So no previous where th th you didn't swap. And then if C1 is greater than P2 and C2 is greater than P1, that means that we swap previously and that's fine. But th then now we keep it the same. So same thing, but previous of one. And because we don't swap, we don't have to add any cost or the cost is zero, you would prefer. And then, the, and then now um, this is going to be uh, swapped. So swapped on the current index so let's just say we want to swap it then that means that c 
Um, hmm. I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean, the reason why I'm pausing is because I think I recognize that this this condition is the same as this one. And I guess that makes sense. Right? Uh, same on the previous, to be clear. But anytime that happens, you know, I give it a pause to make sure that I'm right. But I'll, I'll just write it this way anyway, just because I think it's a little bit um, more consistent. Uh, okay. So then now, same on the previous. So then now, that means that we did swap. Well, we did do a swap on this one, so that's why there's a plus one, right? And then the last one is a swap on both, right? Then now, C2 is greater than P2, and C1 is greater than P1, right? And of course, this is also the same as this. So it is kind of interesting, I think. Unless I'm wrong, then it's less interesting, but you know, yeah. And that's pretty much it. And then now we can say previous is equal to current, just, you know, end of the loop. And at the end, I think we can, yeah, return current. Um, yeah, just min of current. I think that should be good, but maybe not. So we'll see. Well, I mean, I guess these inputs are kind of crappy, to be honest. Um, I think one thing I wanted to do then is, if that's the case, we can we should be able to get the same answer if they're just you know nums one and nums two swapped. That would be a very easy thing to kind of throw off. It's still one, so I think that's at least a good sign. Let's give a submit. Don't know if it's right, but yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, as you can see, um, th this has all the space optimization stuff and di uh, uh, bottoms up dynamic programming. Uh, I am a little bit slow because I have to be deliberate about it. Some of these cases are interesting and in a way that I didn't really expect. Hmm. I mean, there is some like symmetry about, um, what's it called? Like if you swap, you know, two things, but I expected four states because, you know, you have two things, right? You have two things, the, la the previous items and the current items, and both of these two items have two states, so there's going to be four different outcomes. So I didn't really expect, I mean... It's not surprising once you think through it, but it, I didn't expect it per se because it's just, I don't know, there is a nice symmetry about it, I suppose. Um, but then you can just write, you know, you can obviously now copy this into here and this into here, which, I mean, I think that's the thing, right? Is that, so you look at this code and, you know, there's even minor comments, it looks clean, it's very readable. I mean, as readable as dynamic programming can be, say, right? But if you just make a minor change, you know, uh, you go like, duh, 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 right? And you like, and you get rid of these if statements and maybe some, and you're like, why? Why is this? How? How? Do, oops. How does this even work? You know, you just like this is magic. I don't get it. And then you know, um, which is kind of both the magic and the scary part of dynamic programming sometimes, just because you can, you know, look at the code and you're like, okay, this is easy, and then you, you know. I just want to submit it for 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 future sake, but yeah, um, yeah, that's all I have for this one, I suppose. I, oh yeah, I was gonna say, wait, what happens if it's infinity? But I I've, I did remember reading that it can always be possible. Otherwise, you have to like do an. I mean, it's not that hard. You just do an ex extra if check, and if this is like infinity, then you just do a do a, um negative one or whatever they want to do, right? Um, what's the the uh, complexity here? I think this is pretty straightforward to analyze I mean uh, you have one loop you have four variables really or oh, well, two two variables contain four slots or whatever you want to call it right so lin uh, linear time constant space and that's all I have for this one let me know what you think thanks for watching stay good stay healthy to go mental health I'll see y'all later and take care bye bye